Hey dude, yeah that's right, it's me again. I'm just shooting off this quick bit of video, quick bit of footage just prior to me going out. Uh, I've moved the fermentation into the kitchen area here because it's got more of a constant temperature and I thought that might work out well. The noise of the escaping carbon dioxide from under the rim of the lid of the container early this morning sounded like a whistle. It was like beep. It was totally weird. Don't know whether you can hear it on the microphone, but you might be able to hear some bubbling going on inside there. Sort of gassy, kind of like bubbly stuff. You know, anyway, if you can't, you got to take my word for it because basically there's a lot of activity going on inside there. Making tons of carbon dioxide, tons of alcohol. The whole place smells like a brewery. <laughs> Now, as far as the order of operations are concerned, I think one has to change one's order of operations when doing the fermentation. So, it's firstly make sure everything is sterilized. When it's going through the process of sterilization, maybe heat up all the water. And so you're putting hot, fresh, ideally sterilized water into the container. Um, rinse out your containers, pour the water in, then dissolve all the sugar in the water you're going to be doing the fermentation in. And either at that point, once the sugar is thoroughly dissolved, or immediately uh, after you've put the yeast in, then you test the specific gravity with a wine and beer hydrometer. And you note down the value. This is the thing which I, I neglected to do because I did it all wrong. Uh, once you've done that, you'll then be able to take another measurement when it's finished fermenting. And that will then give you an idea as to how much alcohol has been produced by your turbo yeast. Uh, from that you can get a bit of a feeling as to how much will come out when you're doing your distillation, taking into account the efficiency of your distiller. Okay? And then once you've done your distilling, you can of course measure the specific gravity of the distilled spirit using the spirit hydrometer. Okay? Alright, so there is actually a procedure. I screwed up on the last one because I'd followed different instructions on a different website that says the first thing you should do with your yeast to be nice to your yeast cells is to rehydrate them. So I put all the yeast in with some water and it started to react straight away and started to foam up big time. I mean, it was like... Um, it was like a big chemical reaction happening in that little container and it went over, it was about to go over the side so at that point I poured it into the water with all the sugar and that's how we got the fermentation going. So the fermentation is underway, that's okay, but with these turbo, high power, you know, super strength yeasts, you seriously don't need to, you know, waste your time uh, with trying to rehydrate the yeast first prior to putting it into the sugar solution. It's not necessary whatsoever. These are just a few things I found out on the way. This is the first time I've done any fermentation since about nine years ago, I think it was. Possibly longer, I don't remember. Uh, so, you know, I've, I've gone and lost a lot of my skills since those wonderful days of um, basically making crap and getting pissed, you know, I don't, I don't do that anymore. So this is purely now for fuel, because I don't drink. I've got another yeast on the, on the order right now. It's a 24-hour yeast, which only goes up to, uh, 13%. The one I've got in there right now, that's going to go up to the potentially 23%, okay? Which means it's going to increase the quantity of yield that one can get from, um, actually using any form of distillation. So the 13% yeast might not necessarily provide quite as much alcohol, but there'll still be a lot more than the quantity produced by the White Ace Cider experiments that I did in my little countertop distiller. Okay. Now I'm going to be distilling ideally under two conditions. The first condition is the way that the distiller is at the moment, but of course with the higher yeast uh, sorry, higher alcohol con content of the new ferment. And I think that the alcohol content is going to help a lot. Okay? I'm going to be using a measuring jug so I can measure out um, 750 milliliters worth of distillate. Once I've done that, I can then test the specific gravity. Then the second condition, taking into account that this is with a still which I have modified through putting a bit of elastic band around the vent hole on the worm coil inside it. Okay? That's first condition. Second condition is increase the strength of alcohol. Um, third condition is to extend the worm out of here 
because there's a little silicone plug under there. I showed you that before. And if I can get a um, set of calipers, which I think I can, I can measure the diameter inside and then get um, some copper piping and do some swirly, wormy things and see if I can get more length that way and therefore more efficiency with the production of alcohol okay through distillation which means that I'll be closer I hope I'll be closer to the creation of fuel when I'm distilling the 13% okay so it'll be a 24 hour yeast so I can get it set up first thing in the morning on let's say Tuesday and then by Wednesday when I tend to have a quieter day work wise I can then spend the day distilling and see basically you know how it goes okay uh, that's where I'm at at the moment. The goal here is to make fuel alcohol, okay, that I can then put into my DIY kind of like, see if I can get the focus on it right so you can see it. There you go. That's my do-it-yourself ethanol fireplace, namely my canner with a few bits of metal inside it. Uh, and I can make up various gels and so on and so forth. Um, using calcium carbonate and white vinegar and of course the alcohol I'll be getting from the distillation itself. So um, that's where I am right now. I'm also researching various different providers of sugar because sugar is going to be a major expense. expense. The 24 hour yeast uh, that will only work on 6 kilograms of sugar this one I've got in here is working on 10 or should be working on 10 and a half kilograms of sugar so that increases the expense when I've found a good sugar supplier who can sell in quantities that I'm, I approve of I think I'm going to check out probably a baking company uh, and I will just buy like a thousand kilograms something like a thousand kilograms of sugar because if you think about it if I'm going to get through 6 kilograms um, five times a week. It's five, six, that's thirty kilograms a week. Um, ten weeks, that's three hundred kilograms, and so on and so forth. Uh, so there will be a way, I believe, of cutting the cost down of production. So I might be able to undercut once I've got all of my equipment uh, working properly. The producers of bioethanol, which are out there. If I can do that, then essentially the possibility of using the ethanol alcohol itself for space heating, cooking, um, provision of hot water, okay, is looking a lot more likely. On one particular forum I'm a member of, there's a chap who says, why don't you just buy like four kilograms worth of chafing gel? Because basically four kilograms worth of chafing gel, what's that? In, in a cold winter's day, if that's the only heat source I've got, that's like one day's worth of usage. And there's no way I'm going to spend like, what, 30 or whatever pounds on that. Okay? Far too expensive. So instead, it's better for me to make it myself. Uh, and slowly and surely build up the artistry of how to produce my own alcohol for fuel at cheaper rates than one can buy commercially. Okay? And that's going to help me to get myself off the gas grid, um, the, you know, the grid for heating, the grid for all sorts of things. Uh, so yeah, it's going to be good. And yes, I'm going to get that distiller replaced with, with something that can be operated by wood gas stoves underneath and so on and so forth for the purposes of making sure the energy required to distill the alcohol will also be off-grid produced. Namely, sticks I've collected when I've gone through a walk in the country and so on and so forth. That's the plan. Just using this at the moment to try and work out basically how it all works and to get some experiential hands-on stuff done. So that's where I am at the moment. So, links in the information box as per usual. Um, help me get off grid and I'll help you do the same. Just giving you the information that you require bit by bit.